so let's get back to the power method algorithm. Recall the algorithm just picks a random plus minus one vector and then computes m to the k times x, where k is properly chosen. We will see in analysis why k has to be chosen in this way. Now, just for the sake of the analysis, write x as a linear combination of uh, a basis of uh, eigenvectors. And let's see what is the Rayleigh quotient of the vector that we output. So y is m to the k times x. So what is y transpose m y? It's uh, m to the k x transpose times m times m to the k times x. So this is x transpose. m and m transpose are the same, so it's just m to the k times m times m to the k times x. So it's uh, x transpose m to the 2k plus 1 times x transpose. And in the denominator, it's the same calculation except for the m in the middle. And so it will be x transpose m to the power of 2k times x. Now, what is x transpose times some power of m times x? We write x in the basis of uh, eigenvectors. So this will be summation over ij of uh, ai aj vi transpose m to the k vj. Now m times vj is lambda j times vj. And then m squared times vj will be lambda j times lambda j times vj. So m to the k times vj will be lambda j to the k times vj. And the inner product of uh, vi and vj is always 0, except when i is equal to j. So the whole expression is simply summation over i of uh, ai squared times uh, lambda i to the k times uh, vi transpose vi, which is just 1. So here we have the this calculation for the case in which m is raised to the power of uh, 2k plus 1. And here we have this calculation where m is raised to the power of uh, 2k. This is the Rayleigh quotient of the output. And now we need to understand how it relates to lambda 1. So we have ordered the eigenvectors from uh, the largest to the smallest. So let's call L the position such that the eigenvectors lambda 1 up to lambda L are at least 1 minus epsilon of uh, times lambda 1. And then from lambda L plus 1 on, they are less than lambda 1 times 1 minus epsilon. It's entirely possible that all the eigenvalues are bigger than 1 minus epsilon times lambda 1. In this case, L will be n, and uh, this inequality will be vacuous. Now we're going to get a lower bound for the numerator, and an upper bound for the denominator, so that we can say that the Rayleigh quotient is at least some expression. So for the numerator, we're just going to discard all the terms corresponding to the eigenvalues which are smaller than 1 minus epsilon times lambda 1. This is a sum of uh, squares times non-negative numbers, so we can disregard uh, some subset of the sum. Here is where we use the fact that all the eigenvalues are greater than or equal to zero. Then for each term of this summation, we lower bound one of these lambda i's by lambda one times one minus epsilon. And so we get this lower bound for the numerator. For the denominator, we separate the terms where lambda i is more than 1 minus epsilon times lambda 1, and the terms for which lambda i is smaller. For the terms in which lambda i is smaller, lambda i to the 2k will be upper bounded by lambda 1 to the 2k 
times 1 minus epsilon to the 2k. The point here is that this part of the sum will go to 0 when k is large. Now suppose that this quantity was in fact 0. Then the ratio between the numerator and the denominator is going to be at least lambda 1 times 1 minus epsilon, which is what we wanted. So now we will have to make a more careful calculation in which we say that not only this goes to 0, but that for k sufficiently large, this whole term is small compared to the numerator. And to make this comparison, we notice that the summation of all the ai squared is the same as the length square of x. x is a vector all whose entries are plus 1 and minus 1. So the length square of x is n. So this summation is at most n. Now, at least with some constant probability, a1 is at least a half in absolute value. So a1 square is at least a quarter. So n is at most uh, 4 times n times uh, a1 square. So we have this upper bound for the denominator. And finally, we notice that this whole error term is up to 4 times sine times 1 minus epsilon to the power of uh, 2k is lambda 1 to the 2k times a1 squared. And lambda 1 to the 2k times uh, a1 squared is one of the terms that appears here. And so we can account for this error term just by multiplying this summation by 1 plus 4n times 1 minus epsilon to the 2k. Now let's say the ratio between the numerator and the denominator and we're going to get, after some cancellations, 1 minus epsilon times lambda 1 divided by 1 plus something that goes to 0. In particular, if we choose k so that the denominator is roughly 1 plus epsilon, the whole thing will be 1 minus 2 epsilon times lambda 1 at least. And in order for this to be about epsilon, it's sufficient for k to be about 1 over epsilon times log n over epsilon. So that's the whole analysis of uh, the power method for finding the largest eigenvalue of a positive semi-definite matrix. Now, how do we find the second largest eigenvalue of a given matrix? Well, if we already know an eigenvector of the largest eigenvalue, then we can proceed in the following way. We pick a random vector as before, and then we subtract from the vector, its uh, component parallel to the eigenvector of uh, lambda 1. And then we multiply this vector by m to the k, where k is what we had before. Now the vector x that we have here is orthogonal to v1, because we subtracted from x its component parallel to v1. And then at every, every time we multiply m by x, we maintain the invariant that we are orthogonal to v1. So the final output will be orthogonal to v1. Now we can think of uh, this calculation as being uh, the application of the power method, not to m, but to the linear mapping from the space orthogonal to v1 to the space orthogonal to v1. And then essentially with the same analysis, we can argue that what we will find will be approximately the largest eigenvalue of this linear mapping. But what's the largest eigenvalue of this linear mapping? It's just lambda 2. So here is how we can find also lambda 2 within some approximation, along with a vector orthogonal to v1 whose really quotient is close to lambda 2. If we want to compute the second smallest eigenvalue of the Laplacian, then all we need to do is to apply the algorithm that computes the second largest eigenvalue of a given positive semi-definite matrix to the matrix 2 times the identity minus the Laplacian. Because if lambda 1 up to lambda n are the eigenvalues of the Laplacian, then the eigenvalues of twice the identity minus the Laplacian will be the same eigenvalues of the Laplacian, except that every eigenvalue lambda of the Laplacian becomes an eigenvalue 2 minus lambda of this matrix M. 
So the largest second value of m will be 2 minus lambda 1, which is 2. The second largest will be 2 minus lambda 2. And the matrix m is still positive semi-definite because the smallest second value will be 2 minus lambda n, which is greater than or equal to 0. So if we find an approximation of uh, the second largest eigenvalue of m, we will get an approximation of uh, 2 minus lambda 2. Notice also that the two matrices have the same eigenvectors. So what we're doing in time nearly linear in the size of the graph times 1 over epsilon is to find uh, a vector x whose Rayleigh quotient for this matrix m is going to be at least 1 minus epsilon times uh, 2 minus lambda 2. Well, this quotient is just uh, 2 minus the Rayleigh quotient of x with respect to l, because this is x transpose 2i x divided by x transpose x, which is simply 2, minus x transpose l x divided by x transpose x, which is the real quotient of x with respect to the Laplacian. So the, the real quotient of x with respect to the Laplacian is 2 minus this quantity. So it is at most 2 minus 1 minus epsilon times 2 minus lambda 2. So this is at most uh, lambda 2 plus 2 epsilon. Say if we choose epsilon to be lambda 2, this expression will be at most 3 times lambda 2. And the running time will be linear in the size of the graph times 1 over lambda 2. So when lambda 2 is very small, this running time will not be nearly linear in the size of the graph. Although if lambda 2 is a constant or it's uh, something like uh, log n, then this running time will be approximately linear in the size of the graph. We will discuss later how to speed up spectral algorithms in graphs where lambda 2 is very small. Uh, for now, let's see what the power method looks like to compute the second smallest second value of the Laplacian of um, a couple of uh, example graphs. So for the numerical stability, it's a little better instead of using 2i minus l as the matrix to which we apply the power method to use half of that matrix. Because by using this matrix, the vector could uh, grow in magnitude at every step, in fact, grow exponentially in magnitude in a number of steps. So then it would have to be renormalized. While uh, if this is the matrix that we use, the vector will uh, keep approximately the same magnitude.